Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at the topic electrochemistry and uh, for today we are going to be looking at a preferential discharge in, in the case where the type of electrode has been changed. So previously we have looked at other factors that affect the preferential discharge but today we are going to see if you are going to get different um, products when we change the type of electrode that we used in, we use in a certain uh, reaction and then we are going to practice different types of also uh, electrolysis of the same so we will start with the electrolysis of copper sulfate but we will start with electrolysis using the inert electrodes first and then we'll compare with what you're going to get when we use uh, copper electrodes so when we start with inert electrodes, remember the first thing we, we do is identify the ions present in solution. So the ions present in this solution, we have copper ions, we have sulfate ions. These are the ones that come from the copper sulfate solution. And then we have the OH ions and the hydrogen ions, which comes from the water. So on the anode, the anions travel to the anode so an ions in this case is the sulfate an ion and the OH ions and then on the cathode the copper cations and the hydrogen ion also go to the cathode so when we come to the anode anode this is this is the positive electrode this is where there is loss of electrons if we look at the preferential discharge for sulfate and hydroxyl ions, you notice hydroxyl ions will have the highest tendency to lose the electron. It is less positive in comparison to the sulfate ions. You can go back to the electrochemical series that was projected in the previous lesson or also in your textbook and check that as well. So you prefer hydroxyl ions over sulfate ions. So when we discharge hydroxyl ions, it's for molecules of OH ions which is uh, discharged to give uh, two molecules of water plus oxygen gas uh, plus four electrons they are given off. I said that this equation is very common because most of the dilute solutions, aqueous solutions are usually electrolysis of water so it is important to remember because it's something that you're going to be repeating again and again. And then at the cathode, now at the cathode, we have copper ions and hydrogen ions. Uh, previously, you noticed most of the dilute solutions and aqueous solutions, the hydrogen ions was preferred. But if we look at the standard electrode potential of hydrogen, which is 0, 0, 0, and then for copper ions, the standard electrode potential is positive 0, 0.034. So at the cathode, we want the one that has a higher tendency to gain. So we want the one that is more positive. So if you consider between copper ions and hydrogen ions, you notice that copper ions will be preferred because it is more positive than the hydrogen ions. This is contrary to what we have been seeing in most of the reactions we have done together because most of the cations that we have worked with are above hydrogen in the electrochemical series. So hydrogen will be preferred or they are more negative. But in this case, now we are encountering a copper ions, which has a, a more positive standard electrode potential. So instead of the hydrogen ions, copper ions are the ones that are going to be preferred in this reaction. So the copper ions will gain two, uh, four electrons. So one copper ion will gain two electrons. So we need two copper ions to gain the four electrons to form two uh, atoms of a copper solid. So in the cathode, you will see some copper deposit as you can see from the diagram. Uh, and then the gas, which is the oxygen gas, is given up on the carbon electrode. So you notice this is the preferential now discharge for aqueous solutions of copper 2 sulfate. Let's look at what happens when we do the same reaction but using now copper electrodes. So if we use copper electrode, let's, re let's look at the ions present one more time. So we have copper ions, we have sulfate ions, we have hydrogen ions and OH ions. So at the anode, 
we have the sulfate ions and the OH ions traveling to the anode. And then at the cathode, we will have the copper ions and the hydrogen ions traveling at the cathode. So at the anode, we want the one that has the highest tendency to lose. But now everything changes the moment we use carbon electrode. We said that we prefer using inert electrons because they do not take part in the reaction. So when you use a, a electrode that takes part in the reaction, it's going to interfere with the reaction. It's the one that goes into the solution instead of the preferred ions. So in this case, you'd prefer the OH ions, but this reaction is interfered with because of the fact that we have carb, uh, copper electrodes. These copper electrodes now take part in the reaction. You remember when we were discussing the half cell, when we were introducing the electrochemical cell, you can go back and check that. We said that if you put a metal rod in a solution containing the metal ions, it is going to be discharged. So we do not consider the ions in the solution, but we will now the electrode itself is going to take part in the reaction. So we will discard all these ions. They're not going to be discharged, any of them. Instead, the copper solid, that is the electrode, is going to discharge to form copper ions plus two electrons which are given off. These electrons are the ones who travel through the wire. So you notice that our copper is going to be deflected with time. It's going to be used up in time. The sulfate ions and the OH ions in solutions are not being used at all. So, so these electrons travel to the uh, to the cathode where now this is where now we consider which is preferred in this case but when you consider copper ions and hydrogen ions copper ions will be preferred because they have the highest tendency to gain they are more positive in comparison to hydrogen so the copper ions get those two electrons to form copper solid so you see copper being deposited at the cathode and then it's being lost at the anode. So after some time, the copper um, anode has to be replaced because it has been used up in solution. So you can see we are using we we are um, the 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 copper sulfate solution. The color when we were, when we looked at the one that had inert electrodes, the copper sulfate color is changing because the copper ions are being used up. But in this case, it's not changing as long as the, ele the anode is, th is present because we are introducing copper ions in solution and taking them away. So it is a continuous supply of addition and removal. So the color does not change. That is a blue color. But when you go to the dilute, because we are just removing the copper ions, the blue color is going to change with time. It's going to turn colorless after some time. So let's look at another example. So we look at silver nitrate, now using carbon electrode first, and then we do the same using uh, the silver ele uh, electrodes. So in this case, we have the silver ions, um, nitrate ions, we have the OH ions and the hydrogen ions. So at the anode, an ions go to the anode. So you have the nitrate. This is nitrite three, and then OH ions, and then at the cathode, the cation travels the cathode, which is we have silver and hydrogen ions. So at the anode, between nitrate ions and OH ions, nitrate is more positive than OH ions, so OH ions will be preferred, which is less positive. So four hydroxide ions are discharged to give two molecules of water uh, plus oxygen gas uh, plus four electrons. These four electrons travel to the cathode. When we get to the cathode, now we have silver and hydrogen. So you notice silver is below hydrogen in the electrochemical series. It is positive 0 0.80 volts, while hydrogen is 0, 0. So you notice silver is more positive in comparison to hydrogen, so it will be preferred. So the silver ions can gain one electron at a time, so we are going to balance to have four of them, gaining the four electrons to form the four atoms of the silver solid. So you see there is a deposit that is going to happen at the cathode, while the anode, the OH ions are the ones that are 
that are being used up in the process. So we are using up the OH ions and the silver ions. So you can see the solution is becoming acidic with time because the nitrate ions react with the hydrogen ions in solution to form nitric acid. So you can see its acidity increasing with time. So if we repeat the same experiment using now silver electrode. So once again, we have the silver ions, the nitrate ions, uh, the OH ions and the hydrogen ions. So at the anode, the anions travel at the anode, which is the nitrate ions and the OH ions. And then at the cathode, the silver cations and hydrogen ions. So now, because we are using silver electrodes, they take part in the reaction. They interfere with the reaction. So instead of the, of the, the anode, instead of discharging the nitrate ions, instead of that, what happens? The silver will interfere with this reaction. So none of these ions are going to be discharged. So it's a silver solid that gets discharged to form silver ions. And one electron is given off that travels to the cathode. When you go to the cathode, automatically we said silver ions are the ones that are more positive in comparison to hydrogen. So the silver ions gain one electron to form silver solid. So you see at the cathode, the silver ions is deposited and the anode, it is being depleted. So we have, we, after some time, we have to uh, change or change the anode because it's going to com be completely used up so that brings us to the end so i hope you've seen the difference between concentrated solutions and dilute solutions and also when we change the type of electrode it completely affects the reaction since the electrode also takes part in the reaction that's why we prefer using graphite electrode or carbon electrodes because they do not take part in the reaction so see you in the next lesson